This lovely manhwa is titled, I Swear We're Just Friends. There was also something even scarier, apart from the fact that the three students were being used as an example. Suddenly, overnight, the families of the three students were ruined. While the workers were out, an earthquake occurred and the mine collapsed. A trade ship suddenly met a sea storm and sank into the deep ocean. A fire swept through the warehouse and factory, and several years' worth of products were burnt. One would wonder, could a coincidence ever be so sublime? What a disaster, Lian thought, sitting by herself, worried about what had happened. Not only had the three students who had bullied her been expelled, but their families had also experienced a rapid downfall. She wondered if karma laid an invisible hand and laid down punishments. It was quite good that she didn't have to worry about the consequences, but it was really bad that such a rumor should be connected to her. It was already so bad that she didn't have any friends. Now people didn't even want to make conversations with her. Jay, Ford sat by her side, trying to ease the tension. It doesn't matter. You only hung out here? Jay, Ford said to her. And that was true. Lien did not even try to make conversations. All she did was hang out in the club room, so technically her life did not change a bit. She placed her hands on her cheek, thinking. She somehow realized that there was something that actually did change in her life. Suddenly, she heard her name, and coming towards her with a flower was Carrie Sun. I saw this flower and immediately thought of you, Carrie Sun said to her, standing before her and stretching his hands to give her the flower. I already told you I'm glad that you think of me, but no need to rip a perfectly normal flower for me, Lien said to him. Karasin's excited mood disappeared upon hearing her say that, and Lien was quick to see that. She quickly accepted the flower since there was really nothing she could do about it, as it had already been cut. She decided to put it in a vase, which brought back the smile to Karasin's face immediately. Jay, Ford teleported to get a vase. Lien questioned why he was teleporting just to get a vase. Jay, Ford responded, telling her not to worry about him, but rather she should think of herself. Lien looked lost and confused. Knowing Jade Ford, she was sure he was going to get something exotic. It was obvious what had changed. It was Carrie's son. Suddenly, he started being cute outright to Lien. He laughed at whatever she said and always tried to take care of her. Now, because of him, she had five different colored blankets. Lien didn't know what to make of this, but at least she was familiar with guys her age doing this. It looked to her that maybe Carrie Sun was just excited about having a friend of the opposite gender. She, of course, didn't really blame him. If possible, she would want to be friends with him as long as possible, too. Well, whatever. Even if I'm alone, Carrie Sun is still going to be my friend, right? Lien spoke, making Jay Ford ask if she would still consider him a friend even if he didn't give her flowers. Lien happily said yes, to Karazin's dismay. He called Lien softly, not happy with her response, reminding her that she had known him longer than Jay Ford, which meant they should be closer. Lien recalled that there wasn't even that much of a difference since they had all met the same day. She didn't see that as important, but Carrie Sun wouldn't see it any other way. He looked at Lien so softly, asking her what number he was on her most important list. Lien suddenly wished she hadn't asked the question in the first place. Now she couldn't look at him and answer honestly. So instead of answering directly, she told him that in terms of hair, he was the 40th strand near the temple, and in terms of eyelash, it was around the 27th strand. Carrie's son turned red, looking away from Lien. Why is he so red? Lien thought, wondering what his reaction could mean. After a while, she assured him that it was a joke, but Karazin's expression did not change a bit. He looked sad and serious. Lien informed him that it wasn't really possible for her to place both of them on ranks since they were both close friends to her. This statement only made Carrie Sun feel more gloomy. Lien needed to stop this and, knowing how sensitive he could be to certain questions, asked him if he was in any way asking for something more. What? No, no, I'm not asking for anything more than friendship. Carrie Sun raised his voice, scurrying away from Lien. The question threw him off guard and he even denied ever thinking about when they would get married. Lien didn't even ask him that. It was clear to her now how far Carrie's son had taken them in his mind. Lien called out to him, 
reminding him that they were the only friends she had in the academy and she was happy with the way things were with them. Carrie's son made a worried face, wondering if things would change if Lien ever got new friends. Why that face? Lien thought looking at him. She knew that he always made that face when he said something in a particular way. At the female academy dorms, Lien walked down the hall, thinking about what had happened in the club room. Carrie's son might not know, because shooing people who wanted to be friends was a daily occurrence for him, so he might not know. But she was sure that it would be nice to just have someone to study with or read a book with. She was lost in thoughts and didn't notice the pile of boxes before her. The lady holding up the boxes peeked from behind to see who had obstructed her. Seeing who it was, she shrieked and immediately jumped on Lian's body, complimenting how much better she looked than what the rumors had said. The name of the girl who had jumped on her is Jane. She was Lian's new roommate. From the quick conversation they had, Lian learned that they were both in the same grade and classmates. Jane had just come back from being absent due to family issues and was two years older than Lian. Sitting in the female dorms, Lian greeted her one more time, but then suddenly realized that Jane had called her by her name without even knowing who she was at first. Jane quickly told her that she had seen her name on her name tag. What's with the honorifics? Lian thought, looking at her reactions. She spoke up, telling Jane that she was allowed to speak comfortably. After all, they were friends. However, Jane said something that really got her interest. Jane had told her that it wasn't that she was uncomfortable. She just wouldn't dare speak to her casually. Seeing that Jane wasn't going to listen and speak to her in a casual manner, Lien offered to also relate with her formally. Lien stated that from now on they were going to be roommates and she wanted to live peacefully with her, much to Jane's joy. They both shook hands on it and Lien had a good feeling about Jane becoming her new roommate. The next day, Jane was woken up by the sound of movement in their room. She called out to Jane, causing Jane to apologize immediately, thinking she had woken her up. Lien, standing up from the bed, assured her that she wasn't the reason she had woken up. In fact, she assured her that she had slept enough. They made small talk when Jane turned from the mirror to face Lien. Lien was surprised to see Jane's face with makeup, as though she was ready to return. Jane explained to her that she wasn't returning but wanted to go out and get some things because she had returned to the academy in a rush. Lien stretched her hands, still looking at Jane in surprise, however accepting the fact that maybe she had indeed been in a rush. Lien, let's go together. Jane's voice broke her thoughts. Lien wondered why Jane would want her to go with her. Jane concluded that since Lien had always slept until noon on weekends, it meant that she didn't always go to the market so she felt it nice that Lien go with her. Finally, Lien agreed and got ready to follow Jane to the market. Lien looked around at the market, thinking about how she had been dragged out by Jane, but it felt nice to be out in a packed street. Lien turned to Jane, who was behind her, and thanked Jane for letting her tag along. Excitement filled Jane when she heard that Lien loved the market, and joyfully, she opted to buy everything they wanted. Lien and Jane looked at everything profusely, from a cute tabletop item to a cute glass bottle to put on the table. They couldn't resist the pretty handkerchiefs with patterns, so they bought everything they desired. Lien was sure that she would have walked past the handkerchief if she had come alone, but this was what shopping with friends was for. Lien looked to a particular place and noticed the people buying cookies. She didn't know she said it out loud, and Jane quickly picked it up and asked if she wanted to eat cookies. Lien turned down the offer at first, but seeing as they were already out, she didn't mind trying it and it looked like it could be a good snack, so she accepted Jane's offer to get her a cookie. When they had gotten to the stall, Lien couldn't just pick one. There were so many to pick from. What caught her attention the most was the fact that they were all heart-shaped. Lien took her time, picked out different kinds of cookies, and picked many, much to Jane's surprise. As they walked away from the store with Lien still trying to pick more cookies, Jane asked a question, Lien, do you have a type? She asked. Finally happy with the amount of cookies she had acquired, Lien replied, telling Jane that her type was nice guys. Well, Jane was shocked to hear that nice was enough for the kind of guy Lien wanted. Lien saw Jane's reaction and continued speaking. She told her that the nice she desired was of a pathetic amount. The guy had to be really nice. She turned, winked, and said to Jane that if the guy wasn't nice enough, he wouldn't get her attention. 
What about you? Lien questioned. For Jane, if they could at least make conversation, it seemed she was fine with the guy, but Lien didn't see making conversation as anything significant for love. In fact, for her, it was the barest minimum for love. Jane gagged with Lien's opinion for the fact that there weren't even that many people who could communicate, and it wasn't easy to find someone. Jane was curious to know if there was any guy around Lien, a nice guy who was really close to her. Really close? Lien asked, wanting to know the extent of proximity Jane was referring to. Jane gave an example, like a club friend or even among the school. She was about to give more examples when Lien mentioned Jay Ford. Jane gasped, and it didn't take a lot for Lien to figure out what Jane was thinking about. She tried to clear the air, but Jane wasn't listening. She desperately tried to get such ideas out of Jane's mind, but Jane just kept making it worse the more she tried to explain. It seemed like she wasn't going to listen, so Lien left Jane alone and decided to eat some cookies. That night, in the academy, somewhere, Jane walked down a dark hallway, thinking of Lien. She was really a good person and would make a good friend for her. She abruptly stopped when she noticed a figure standing close by. Jane bowed, informing the figure that she was assigned to the same room as Lien and would keep updating him as he wished. The figure, who stood in the dark, saying nothing, was none other than Carrie Sun. Lord Carrie Sun, I was wondering what kind of behavior should I watch out for? Jane inquired. Carrie Sun responded in a hard tone, telling her to do exactly as she was told. From Jane's response, it seemed Carrie Sun wanted reports on Lien's interests. While in class, Lien kept calling out to Jane, Jane, she called out loudly for the last time. Jane responded, looking lost. Lien asked why she was spacing out. Jane laughed it off, asking Lien to cut her some slack since it had been two years since she'd been in school. It seemed Jane was the type to get nervous. Lien suggested they eat some cookies to help her feel better. Jane was surprised to hear that she still had cookies, because when they had returned yesterday, Lien had unexpectedly left without giving her any of the cookies they had bought, even though she'd asked for them. Lien was sure that whatever flavor she needed would be there since she had bought a lot. Lien handed the cookies to Jane, and when Jane suddenly noticed that they weren't the only ones who had bought the cookies, Jane asked Lien to look around her, and Lien, doing so, noticed ladies handing cookies over to the guys. Jane had to ask Lien if she was aware that such a thing was happening. The teacher ended the class warning them to make sure no one was participating in cookie day because every year, an attempt was made to poison people and put an unidentified love potion in the bags. So, because of that, cookie day was prohibited in the academy. Lien finally understood why everyone was giving cookies when the teacher wasn't around. She had never heard of the event and wondered if it was student-only, seeing as cookies were still going around despite the school rules. As they walked away from the class, Jane shouted in shock, asking Lien if she had bought the cookies just to share with her. Yeah, I knew you would like them, Lien responded. Jane looked at Lien with so much appreciation. Lien was really kind to her. Lien, on the other hand, felt proud of herself for making Jane happy. No, I have to resist, Jane said almost immediately, to Lien's surprise. Lien wanted to know why she said that. Jane explained that it was because it was a cookie event and the female students were supposed to give cookies to the male students. She urged Lien to give the remaining cookies to the guy she was close to as a friendship cookie. Wondering about what Jane had said, Jane reminded her that she had mentioned a club friend the other day when they went to the market. Lien thought about it but didn't want it because she didn't have any feelings and doing something like giving him a cookie on cookie day wasn't going to be good for their friendship. Lien couldn't do such, especially with Carrie Sun. Even as they set aside the subject of who the cookies should be given to and began to discuss other things, Lien couldn't take Carrie Sun off her mind. She knew his feelings for her and giving him cookies would be crossing the line, and she sure didn't want to lead him on. Lien and Jane waved goodbye to each other, with Lien heading towards the club room. She stood before the club room, assuring herself that she was just doing what normal friends do. Sure, she wasn't confident that she wouldn't like him. Encouraging herself, she opened the door and greeted, walking in only to find the whole place turned upside down. Jade Ford lay on the floor with Carrie Sun holding fire in his hands. He looked really pissed and was about to aim the fire at Jay Ford. 
J. Ford, seeing Lien, was glad and told her to speak to Carrie Sun. It seemed he had heard something that made him angry towards him. He was still trying to plead with Lien to explain to Carrie Sun when Carrie Sun closed the door, leaving Lien facing the clubroom door. Standing outside, she noticed a bright white light shine from the room, and all of a sudden, Carrie Sun walked out smiling. Carrie Sun invited her in, asking how her day was. Lien walked in, confused. She was sure the club room was destroyed just seconds ago. What do you mean? Carrie Sun said in denial. He praised himself before her, calling himself a kind person incapable of doing such a thing to the club room and laying his hands on Jay Ford. You didn't lay a hand, but you shot magic, Jay Ford said, still lying on the floor. How shocking it was for Lien to hear Carrie Sun referring to himself as kind. She reluctantly agreed, looking at his face. Carrie Sun seemed excited, still looking at Lien as though he was expecting something. Lien knew she couldn't change the subject at this point, so she decided to bring up Cookie Day. She informed them that she had heard today was Cookie Day, also adding that the teacher had warned them not to participate, but everyone still did. Carrie Sun told her that everyone does it regardless. It was then Lien brought to his attention that she knew nothing about Cookie Day much to his dismay. Lien could see the level of disappointment Carrie Sun showed. It was more than she had thought. She dismissed that and went ahead to tell them how sure she was that they both had received a lot because of how popular they were. Jay Ford had received cookies, but he had received a normal amount. However, Carrie Sun had told them a long time ago that he wouldn't be accepting any. If Lien hadn't been in the room, Carrie Sun might have pounced on Jay Ford for the second time that day because standing behind Lien, he looked so furious at Jay Ford for revealing that information. Seeing the way Carrie Sun acted around Lien, Jay Ford just wished Lien would feed him one of the cookies. He walked away from them, hands on his waist from the pain he was feeling, wondering where Carrie Sun had heard that he liked him, which caused all this trouble. Lien picked up a blanket, covered herself, and suggested that they go without celebrating Cookie Day since it was a rule in the academy. Carrie Sun couldn't believe what she had just said. He looked devastated. Lien didn't even want to look at him. His eyes made her crumble. She pressed her face to the blanket, not saying anything. There was pin-drop silence in the club room, and she had to take a look at Carrie Sun, only to find him on the floor with his head down. Carrie Sun sat on the floor with his face to his knees. At this point, Lien couldn't ignore his feelings. She couldn't understand why he had looked at her like that when he didn't get cookies on cookie day. By her side, Jay Ford called out to her, his hand pointing under the table. Lien wondered what he meant by under the table. She looked under to find a cookie bag. She looked up at Jay Ford again to find him begging that she give the cookie bag to Carrie Sun and help save him. It looked like Jay Ford had expected this to happen. Well, why wouldn't he? They were close friends after all. Recalling what had happened when she had entered the club room first that day, she assumed they were having fun. The thought of Jay Ford fainting if he had just heard what she had said flashed through her mind. Jay Ford inwardly begged Lien to give Carrie Sun the cookies. What should I do? Lien thought, staring at Carrie Sun, who was still sitting on the floor. After contemplating for a little while, she took the cookies out of the bag and marched down to Carrie Sun, handing them to him, emphasizing that it was a friendship cookie. Are you giving this to me? Carrie Sun asked, looking surprised. Lien responded, saying she had come to give it to him for the sake of their friendship. Carrie Sun received the cookies, thanking her for coming to give them to him. Lien couldn't understand why he looked so happy when it was just cookies she had given him. When a presence at the door caught their attention, Jay Ford left both of them to attend to the student who had just come in. The girl had come to give Jay Ford cookies. It went a long way to prove the extent of Jay Ford's popularity. When the student had left, Jay Ford apologized for the intrusion. Usually, they didn't really come into the club room since Carrie Sun was there, but sometimes the kids were brave too. Lien waved it aside, not necessarily seeing much to it. Ah, uh, Carrie Sun, you are blushing, Jay Ford stated, putting the cookie he had just been given in the place where he stored the rest of the cookies. For someone who had just received the normal amount of cookies, it looked like he got a mountain of them. It wasn't really a good thing for Jay Ford since he was having a hard time disposing of them. Lien couldn't believe that he wanted to dispose of them. 
He had no choice because he couldn't eat all by himself, and not to mention the fact that he wasn't sure what they put inside them, which even made it harder to give them to other people. Jay Ford explained to her that even with the school rules, there was always someone who fell unconscious after eating a cookie. So, every time you get a cookie, you just dispose of it? Leanne asked. Jay Ford wasn't comfortable with the way Leanne had said it, even though that was what he was going to do. Leanne had said it, even though that was what Jay Ford was going to do. Carrie's son used this chance to brag about the cookie Leanne had given him. Jay Ford looked at him in unbelief, knowing fully well that by this time last year, he too threw away all the cookies he had been given. Jay Ford wasn't wrong, but the girl who gave him the cookies was so nervous. Leanne knew that if he threw away the cookies, he would have none left, so she decided to give him the cookies she had wanted him to give Carrie's son. Jay Ford was surprised. He asked her why she had given him the cookie. What do you mean it's cookie day? She exclaimed, assuring him that she didn't put anything inside. When she handed him the cookie, she excused herself to go use the bathroom. Meanwhile, Carrie's son stood behind Jay Ford, already with a gloomy expression. He turned to call Leanne, but she was already out the door. Leanne closed the club door, smirking. She knew what she had done would leave Jay Ford at the mercy of Carrie's son. He hadn't done anything wrong, but she wanted to get back at him for his indifference to the cookies he received. All of a sudden, there was a loud noise from the room, pushing her away from the door. She wondered if something had exploded in the room. Anyway, she didn't know, so she just ran to the dorms. A few days later, Leanne ran towards the club room, applauding herself for acting pretty well on cookie day, considering she didn't know about the event. She thought about the possibility of Jay Ford and Carrie Sun not getting along and planned to mend their relationship if they still weren't getting along. Finally, it was the start of her peaceful academy days. It looked like she was wrong because that day in class, Professor George, the teacher of herbal medicine, had given an assignment that needed to be done in groups. Professor George teaches herbal medicine, which was her major, and although he had an eccentric personality, he had a unique passion for education. He always tells them information unavailable in books, and it seems like he worked in the field for a long time before becoming a professor. Leanne's classmates didn't seem to be aware of that fact, and that was because herbalism was an unpopular subject. Leanne wondered if that was why he assigned a group assignment. The groups were assigned by attendance number. If it was a solo assignment, there wouldn't have been any problem for Leanne, but to be honest, even at that moment, she still hadn't talked to anyone in the class. At most, she decided to be positive, who knew she might make a new friend. A boy walked up to her, suggesting they randomly draw names if no one wanted to volunteer. At the same time, a girl sitting at her side spoke to her, wanting to ask her a question. There's a rumor going around that you like Carrie's son. Is that true? The girl questioned. Leanne suspected it to be Carrie's son who had been saying such things about her. She replied, telling the girl that there was no way Carrie's son would like her. Pfft. Well, I'm not surprised, the girl stated. Leanne wondered what she meant by that when the boy who suggested randomly choosing students raised a sheet, announcing that the leader had been chosen. Seeing the sheet, Leanne had a very bad feeling. There was no reason for Carrie's son to like her, but she was conscious of the fact that he likes her, objectively speaking. Carrison's appearance, talent, family, and even his personality were kind and pure. Even if the other person was of royal descent, Carrie's son was very flawless in every aspect. So, it wasn't really unreasonable for the girl to see her as someone Carrie's son wouldn't like. However, the attitude of evaluating her from top to bottom, she shouldn't just let it slide just like that. Thanks for your support, Potato. As a fellow team member, I hope you keep up with the assignments too, Leanne said. She ignored the look on her face and the yelling and spoke to the other students now seated with her. She informed them that she had a place in mind for them to go to, relating to the professor's topic. Surprisingly, everyone agreed, leaving the girl who was still shouting at Leanne. Leanne entered the club room frustrated, thinking about how she would lead the group. Her grades were on the line with the assignment. Carrie's son walked up to her, asking what was wrong. Leanne denied anything was wrong, saying her legs just got itchy. Carrie's son quickly asked if it was hurting a lot, offering to help her massage it. What? Leanne exclaimed, putting Carrie's son in a tough spot. He explained that he didn't have any weird intentions. 
He was just concerned. Lien laughed, promising she didn't mean it that way. Get a room, you two, Jabe Ford groaned, covering his face. Lien laughed, feeling better, and explained that she'd been feeling down due to strange rumors. Carrie's son curiously asked what rumors she was talking about, and Lien told him about the rumor that he liked her. Carrie's son moved closer, questioning if the rumor had hurt her. Lien said it wasn't upsetting, just annoying to think about what might happen in the future. She joked, are you worried that rumors might block your way home? Carrie's son was glad she wasn't feeling bad and promised to be with her anyway. Their conversation was interrupted by someone who came in looking for Lien. Carrie's son used magic and got to the door before anyone else, scaring the boy standing outside. Who are you? Carrie's son asked. Lien rushed to him, trying to get him away from the door. The boy was one of her project assignment members. He stared at Carrie's son, trembling and apologizing for coming suddenly. Lien saw that with Carrie's son standing there, the boy wouldn't be able to say anything. She pleaded with Carrie's son to wait, and he happily agreed, moving aside. Lien asked the boy what happened since they agreed to meet after club time. The boy reported that it might be tough for him today because his head hurt. Lien dismissed the boy, telling him to organize the herbs he would collect the next day and to come around if he felt better. The boy hurriedly left, and Lien watched him run, shocked that someone sick was strong enough to run away. It finally dawned on her that he had used sickness as an excuse to skip the project. Lien walked into her dorm, feeling exhausted. Jane greeted her, excited to go into town since they had shortened classes today. Lien apologized, informing her she needed to leave again because of a group project. Oh no, cheer up, Jane said, seeing Lien's downcast expression. Lien sighed, trying to cheer herself up. Jane looked at her with pity and brought out an envelope. She handed it to Lien, saying it was a letter she had kept for her, and there were two of them. Smiling, Lien collected the letter. It looked like her aunt had sent her a letter. She noticed the family seal wasn't on it. It seemed like another rule in the academy was not to use family seals. Either way, she recognized the seal. The bird on the seal reminded her of the time when she was little and had seen such a bird while taking a walk with her aunt. She decided to read her aunt's letter when she returned. And then there was the other letter, always carrying a lavender scent so thick it was almost torturous. She opened a drawer to place the second letter inside and found similar letters that had not been opened. Jane noticed this and asked why Lien never opened any of the letters. Lien's response was that there was no value in reading them. Lien saw group assignments as a social evil. Team member one was a malingerer with zero expectations. Team member two, a talking potato, hadn't arrived even after 30 minutes of waiting. Team member three, a man who didn't even remember her name, had come but given an excuse that his grandfather's ex-girlfriend had passed away and needed to go pay his condolences. He even asked for his name to be removed from the assignment. Feeling angry, Lien walked up the mountain. As she walked up the mountain road, she noticed her mood becoming better. She used to come here with her mom to gather medicinal herbs in the past. She hadn't visited her aunt since her parents passed away, but her aunt still sent her all the medicinal herbs she wanted, allowing Lien to devote herself to her studies. Thinking of it, there was a novel about a magician orphan girl who faced hardship at her relative's house. Compared to stories, Lien was lucky to have helpful people around her. She remembered her parents and thought that if she were a little younger, she would have called them mom and dad. They had wanted to add her to the family registry, but it got canceled due to various reasons. Lien looked up to find she had reached her destination, a steel gate with a warning sign of evil spirits inhabiting the place. One reason Professor George gave group assignments was that medicinal herbs mostly nourish mana in the atmosphere. Places with high destiny mana are often inhabited by evil spirits, especially outdoor medicinal herbs. These herbs are of better quality than those cultivated conventionally. To get good scores, one would have to venture into dangerous places, which was why the assignment was given to groups. As she walked through the bushes, they rustled, and she wondered what it could be. She thought she had heard wrongly and kept moving. But she hadn't heard wrongly. On one of the trees, a student stood on its branches, watching her. Lien walked further into the place to find the herb she was looking for, glad she had found it because now she would be able to do the group assignment. 
The herb she found was Dao Tranto. In the book of medicinal herbs, she had read it was difficult to collect. It was grass treated as a useless weed, but was an important ingredient used to make antiperspirants. She knew this because when she was young, she had made it because her father used to smell strongly of sweat. She knelt down to pick up the herbs, feeling lucky because there wasn't really any supply or demand for them, and even if one wanted them, they wouldn't get them. But she had found its habitat. Lien had forgotten her team members already, but she was excited yet not careless because she was always prepared. She was so focused on picking the herbs that she was unconscious of a ferocious-looking animal behind her. Lien, it's dangerous, a voice echoed from behind, attacking the animal before it touched her. Carrie's son held her from behind. As Carrie's son hugged her, she recognized the scent, the clean and unpolluted scent she had noticed before. However, it was so dense that she couldn't escape it. Her whole body was enveloped in a single breath. All of a sudden, she remembered it was Carrie's son, the boy who held her. Carrie's son, how come you're here? She asked in a loud voice, but Carrie's son was more bothered that she came out alone. Lean understood that he must have followed her because he was worried about her. She couldn't even get angry because of the face he made. She explained to Carrie's son that she was prepared in her own way. Lean had carried monster repellent with her and was sure it would have worked excellently well. Even if she had stayed back, the monster wouldn't have attacked her. She looked back, pitying the monster that Carrie's son had killed. Carrie's son immediately used his magic and made the monster disappear. He didn't want Lean to see the corpse. It was just a monster corpse, Lian exclaimed, but Carrie's son wasn't having any of it. He only wanted her to see good things. She asked him to give an example of what good thing he wanted her to see, and he mentioned his face. Then is it okay if I keep looking at you like this all day? She asked him. Carrie's son was shocked hearing her ask such questions, but replied, telling her that it was fine, even if it was for their entire lives. Lien could see he was gushing with words. All of a sudden, it began raining. Sighing, she found a tree to hide from the rain. She had dug a lot of medicinal herbs, along with the Dao Tranto needed for the assignment before it started pouring. She suddenly remembered Carrie's son had been mindlessly digging and hadn't paid attention to him. He had come because he was worried about her. She called out to Carrie's son, asking where he was. Carrie's son appeared beside her immediately, like a character from a forest fairy tale who appears when you call. She looked up to find that the rain was no longer touching her. Carrie's son had used his magic to shield them. She was sure she would have gotten a cold. She thanked him but was curious about where he had gone when the rain started. Carrie's son presented her with a pink flower, informing her that he had been searching for a color that resembled her. However, he couldn't find any. So he got her the rose, which resembled himself. He asked her if the rose he picked had any resemblance to him. Lien took the rose from his hands, sniffed it, and confirmed that the rose indeed resembled him a lot. She recalled when she was a kid, she used to hold her mother's hand while climbing the mountain and ask her the names of animals, weeds, and flowers. Whenever she asked her mother, she would answer with a warm voice without getting annoyed. Seeing the rose reminded her of the time, she asked her mother the meaning of a pink rose. Her mother responded, telling her it meant passionate love, and her father had always gifted them to her. Her thoughts were interrupted by Carrie's son, who suggested they go home, as it looked like the rain wasn't going to stop. Lien looked at Carson, still sniffing the flower. These were memories of her childhood, which she hadn't told anyone, and there was no way Carson would know about it. Carson urged her to hurry, but she was still engrossed in the flower and how it resembled Carson. All her team members had run off, leaving her to go to the mountain alone, but she had been able to finish the project with Carson, who came to protect her from monsters. Even after that, no one contacted her, so she spent the weekend sorting out the herbs herself. Group projects were meant to be social, and it had made her mad for some time that her team members had left her to do the work alone. But she was no longer mad— she had decided to just accept whatever happens. Then there was some surprising news about the guy who ran off after making her leader and giving a weird excuse. It turned out his grandfather's ex-girlfriend was his grandmother. He explained to Lien that he had been frantic that day, which was why he said it in such a weird way. His grandparents were divorced and the whole situation was complicated. 
The guy apologized for leaving and informed Lien that he had heard another guy hadn't come because he was sick. It must have been hard for the two of you to do the work of four, he said, sorry, and was about to ask her to take his name off when she interrupted him. She said she had only written her name since she was the only one who did everything. Her confession shocked him. He thought the other girl, Amila, would help. Lian informed him Amila hadn't told her why she didn't come, adding that she had waited 40 minutes for her. She told him he was the only one who showed up, but then ran off. The guy laughed, but then couldn't help but notice she had called Amila P.T. He was curious to know what Lien meant by P.T. Without hesitation, she told him P.T. stood for of Prattling Tater, a poetic way to express that Amila never knew what she was thinking, but seemed fun when talking to her. Lien assured him Amila was a normal person who talked and laughed with friends. Bringing up Jane as a topic surprised Lien. The guy flushed when Lien mentioned Jane's name. The guy gushed over Jane, commenting on how she laughed and how kind she was. He even told Lien Jane was his type and dream girl. Staring hard at him, she told him to leave. He looked at Lien, shocked, wondering why she was acting that way. The group project wasn't as bad as she had expected. It turned out pretty well, even though she did it alone. It wasn't her best work, but she did what she could in the given circumstances, even as a solo job. She thought she'd get a good grade, but what her group got was an F. She stood before her professor, wondering why he failed her group. You would have been better off if you had picked weeds by the side of the road, her teacher said. Lien happily brought to the teacher's notice that she had gone into a monster habitat, researched, gathered, and sampled herbs. Wasn't the point of this project for us to get practical experience? That's why you put us in such large groups, right, she said. Her professor stated that if she knew that... Why did she get help from outside sources, which was exactly why she failed? Lien wondered what he meant by outside sources. It was true Carson was with her, but he hadn't assisted her with the project. She tried explaining there had been a misunderstanding. She told him she clarified she didn't get help from anyone. She knew she had to stay calm and figure it out. Deciding to hear her out somewhat, the professor asked her about the ranunculus on page 3. Lien confirmed she had put it there. She observed that the teacher remembered the page numbers. She thought he had skimmed through the report since he decided to fail her group. The professor outlined that the stabilizing effects of the herb had only been made known to academia a mere week ago, and first-year seniors couldn't have known that. Yet, Lien claimed to have recognized the herbs in the wild and properly collected them all on her own. Not only that, but there were other herbs she picked that were impossible for a non-expert and a student who didn't pay attention in class like her. It seemed like the teacher had gotten it all wrong. It was true she dozed off in class, but it was because she already knew what he was teaching. Also, she had intentionally chosen rare herbs to get a higher grade, and she couldn't believe it had come back to bite her. Still, it meant he had been watching his students carefully, which made her glad she could defend herself. It was quite important that she handled this right. After all, it was Professor George. She didn't think it would be hard to convince him. All she had to do was tell him the truth. The only important thing she had to remember was that if she stood out too much, things would only get harder. She knew her herbalism knowledge was way ahead of her classmates, but the reason she had never shown it in class was that if she answered all the questions and became the teacher's pet, it would force her to pursue a master's or even a doctorate. Deciding to tell the truth, she explained to him that she had no idea the effects of the ranunculus had only been published recently, as she had already known them since she was young, and just assumed they must be less well-known in the city. Furthermore, she explained that she gathered the herbs from the mountain behind the school and even offered to show him the location on a map as proof. Her plan was to keep it simple and protect her grade without making a big impression. Lien couldn't have known that for centuries— the ranunculus had only been used as a decorative flower. Performing research on it was something an oddball would do, and the oddball who published his paper on ranunculus was beginning to grow interested in the oddball before him. Lien didn't like the feeling she was getting, like she knew she had caught her professor's eyes. Professor George decided to test her. He asked her the effect of a different herb, even though she hadn't used it in her project. Lien answered, telling him the effects, and had more to say but she decided to leave that out since there was a possibility he already knew all that. 
Professor George stared at Lien before him. This was the student who had passed the infamous transfer exam with a near-perfect score, and during class, she was always sleeping or staring out the window, which had made him think there was some foul play behind her admission. But it was obvious now that she didn't speak, because she was brilliant. He immediately apologized, to Lien's surprise. She hadn't really been expecting an apology so easily. Professor George assured her that her grade would be changed to an A+, and would reflect that she had done it alone. She thanked him, and was about to leave when the professor stopped her and asked if she would consider studying in his lab. She looked back to find him smiling. She had never seen him smile, and she remembered the reason why she hadn't wanted him to know how brilliant she was in the first place. Lien scurried and slammed the door, clearly not wanting to study in his lab. Her reaction left the professor amused. A few days later, the guy who had given her a weird excuse to leave the group still disturbed her, asking to introduce him to Jane. She had told him no numerous times, but he just wouldn't listen. However, when she came back to her senses, she realized her life had grown more chaotic. Not only had that guy been a bother to her, but Professor George had also started asking her questions, and nobody tried to pick a fight with her either. She stood by herself, thinking about how her life had been these past few days, and it wasn't that bad. She was disturbed by the presence of the same guy who had been bothering her about Jane. This time, he wanted her to arrange a coincidental meeting with Jane on the weekend, pleading with her to put in a good word for him. Lien turned to him and yelled, asking why she would do that. The guy found her response mean. Lien still didn't want to do anything he asked, even though he pleaded. Jane watched as Lien spoke to the guy and wondered if Lien had a new man. Meanwhile, it seemed like Lien's peaceful life was starting to slip away. Soon, exam period was upon them. The academy's curriculum was divided into general education classes and classes by major. Jane was in Lien's general education class, while Hans and P.T. were in her major class. The student scores from their major subjects counted for half of their grade, but that didn't mean others weren't important. Meanwhile, Hans hadn't given up on bothering her about Jane. Is that all you had to say? Were you lying when you said you needed to ask what we had to study for the test? Lien asked upset. Hans told her he didn't know what they had to study for the test, but since she had given him the time, he figured he'd take the chance to talk to her about Jane too. Huh, Hans, let me ask you a very important question, she said. Lien went ahead to ask him if he would rather eat food that tasted like puke or puke that tasted like food. The question left Hans confused. He didn't understand the kind of question Lien had just asked. Lien urged him to tell her his answer, and Hans picked eating the food that tasted like puke. Before he could say anything else, Lien walked out on him, telling him he had picked the wrong answer. Lien could remember vividly that Jane had picked the puke that tasted like food and said that taste was all that mattered. Apparently, she had disqualified Hans for not knowing any better. As she walked out of the room, she found Jane waiting for her, curious to know who she had been with. Jane even tried glancing behind her, but Lien wouldn't let her. In class that same day, Jane walked up to Lien, wanting to know how her accounting test went. It was okay, Lien responded. But Jane looked kind of sad, complaining that the professor wasn't able to guess what she had studied. The same went for Lien. She too hoped the professor would study their standards as well as they, the students, studied theirs. If you love story like this, please like and subscribe for more.